There is an old Indian adage, which says, education is the best friend and that an educated person is honored throughout the world. India, being an ancient land of advanced civilization, is known for its quest for learning and education since time immemorial. The much respected ancient Indian education system focused on the development of an individual on all levels, be it technical, physical, emotional, psychological and moral. This was the key reason why India produced great scholars. Though many things have changed since the ancient times, still education remained the central focus of Indian society. Currently, it is undergoing a sea change. An ambitious plan has been laid out that of national education policy, which has a target to get 50% of young Indians, which is over half a billion population, into higher education and vocational education by 2035. Accordingly, it is expected that in the next few years' time, one in four people around the world that get a university degree will get it in India. On the other hand, over the years, Australia has established itself as a leading global provider of education to international students. The education that is practical and hands-on focused. Hence, there is a huge opportunity for Australia to form partnership with India in the education space. Speaking on the benefits of Australia and India's education partnership, the Australian Minister for Education Honourable Jason Clare said, the benefits are huge and they are not just financial because international education doesn't just make us money, but it makes us friends. He also said, Australia's universities are well placed to contribute to India achieving its domestic education goals, and to supporting the skills and employment needs of key Indian industries. At this significant juncture, as part of our Namast Made initiative, we spoke with two renowned academicians who have unparalleled expertise and experiences in the higher education space in both Australia and India. Over the last few years or I would say decades, I have seen a significant change in the way India is perceived, received, but also the fact that we as global citizens need to sort of go beyond our national identities. When it comes to education, I think a lot of uh, fascinating things are happening in India. One, the most important being the new education policy, you know, which was launched just uh, some time back, which completely uh, sort of changes the paradigm uh, that Indian education was built on over the last 70 years. It's becoming more open, more digital, more innovative. Ultimately, education is a pathway for economic development. Right. So, uh, really been very lucky to experience Australia uh, both as an academic visitor and as a tourist and I'm very impressed by the Australian way of looking at things and I think there is a scope for each of the countries to learn from each other. But also in the education sector we have got some great startups you know which have come out with uh, fantastic products for online education yeah, right? mm. and they are completely disrupting the education sector. So mm. I think there is a significant opportunity in that space of online education where right. Indian startups can tap into the Australian market and the Australian universities which are very well respected, very well mm. ranked can look at some of those collaborations. The brand of Australia is primarily sport and uh, so cricket, tourism, education. Uh, but uh, if I ask uh, my students, many of whom the executives, beyond that, I do not think there is a clear positioning of the brand Australia. So you can differentiate and position uh, would right. be very more. Absolutely. So for example, Australia's mining sector is you know, right. extremely important, advanced, responsible. Right. I have been to the Center for Socially Responsible Mining in the University of Queensland. I think that's a world-class place to study responsible and sustainable mining. Now, how do we transfer the UQ's work? Just to take an example, the UQ's work in mining to the open-cast mines of India because we are facing this big challenge of transition. 
Now, how do we look at mining operations? But more importantly, what do we do with the mining workforce? Because they are they are not you know traditionally uh, well skilled to do anything not related to their job. So we have I think a few million of mine workers in our country. The thing is India's presidency of the G20. I think that has created okay. a great platform right. uh, for us to accelerate these conversations, right. but right. also reach some conclusions, not just right. talks or not just memorandums, but actual action on the ground, like right. you are doing. Mm-hmm. So, right. what are the good case studies? But also, we need to study the uh, failures, so-called failures, where possibly both sides didn't reap as much benefit as they thought right. they would. I've taught, taught in Australia, I've taught in other countries as well. Yeah. Right. Well, I know the two education systems reasonably well. Yeah. First of all, uh, let me congratulate you on, your, this, effort, on this effort of yours and uh, wish you the very best because it is a very important piece of work. Yeah. And you. Uh, you are a bit of a pioneer in this area. Uh, so. The edu- Indian education system is uh, It's a very complex history and it has evolved in in various ways. So far Australia is concerned, I think the new education policy is very relevant. Indian uh, education sector has been opened up to foreign direct investment. So there is a uh, huge amount of uh, potential for the expansion of Australian educational institutions in India. The question is, of course, is what areas are they going to be the most beneficial to India and to Australia? Yeah. The landscape there is is huge and vast, and in, in many ways, uh, it's very difficult for Australians to to understand all that uh, in, right. a, in a short period of time. Right. So, I, it, my advice would be to concentrate on a few areas right. uh, in which Australia can make a big difference and probably can attract a lot of attention in India. Uh, yeah. One would be TAFE. Yeah. So in India, there is right. a huge uh, unorganized sector for TAFE to look at work. You know, have right. uh, contractors and uh, you know electricians and, and, and uh, right. contractors and uh, so on. Many pe- These people are basically right. completely unregulated. Exactly. They, they, they work in the informal market and right. uh, uh, they are not registered, and mm. uh, so the the work that they do is uh, not standardized, not subject to quality checks, and right. so on. Right. Whereas the opposite is true in many cases in Australia, that they have right. a very strong certification system. Right. So I think that, uh, and that would be offered. Uh, so TAFE-related institutions. If you if, if Australia starts operating some TAFE-related related institutions in some key areas, hmm. uh, especially the growing middle level cities, the hmm. so-called smart cities of India. Right. So uh, then I think that that would be of tremendous value. And that would take up a lot of energy. And I would strongly urge, and that would be very beneficial to India as well, because hmm. then the whole TAFE sector can be regularized and uh, formalized. The other area is uh, is uh, high-level research, uh, especially in the sciences, because uh, India is, pay, is placing a lot of emphasis on uh, the fourth industrial revolution, as they call right. it, in, right. in India. And uh, Australia has some good expertise in in scientific research. Right. We are talking about sciences which are not ge- geographically centered. Right. Uh, Right now, things are being led by by government policy. Right. But the success of the free trade agreement or the preferential trade agreement will be judged not by being led by the government, but by being led by ordinary people. Right. So, when they take advantage of the uh, take advantage of the trade agreement to establish good trade and investment links with each other. That right. would that would, in my view, that would be a measure of the success exactly. of 